Hey everyone. So today I thought I would uh, tackle the um, issue that we're having with the door. So um, basically the back door's not locking. So um, it's obviously something to do with the central lock and I'll show you what I think it is and um, probably what I need to do to rectify it. So I've just taken the uh, door card off, um, as you can see, just here. But yeah, this is the issue we have essentially. So we'll shut the door. When I uh, lock the van, so should be locked, it's still open. So you can actually hear when you're locking or unlocking the van that there's actually like no sound coming from these doors at all. So um, like you shouldn't, you should be able to hear like the locking mechanism, which I can't. Uh, there's a couple of reasons why I think there might be an issue. It could just be like a wire or something like that, which is why I've taken the door card off here. Um, I'll need to remove this in a second. But the reason why I think is because this cable looks like it's had a bit of a, a bodge job on it, if I'm being honest. So um, I'm gonna have to have a look at that and see maybe if there's like a split wire or maybe like one of the motors isn't um, getting any power to actually lock. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take these off. I think I've seen online, I think these just pop off with a flat head screwdriver. So um, yeah, I'll pop this off, have a look and uh, let you know what I find. Okay, I think it's safe to say that these things here are absolutely evil. <laughs> pure evil they literally will not come out they are so difficult to come out um i'll show you what they look like on the other side so that's kind of uh what they look like so they've obviously got these like little teeth bits here and they grip and they're just getting mangled when i'm trying to pull them out um just to show you first of all it's really hard to get a screwdriver behind it so i'm having to use two size flat head screwdrivers just to be able to, so I'm doing this with one hand now just to show you. But uh, if I can get this, there you go. Uh, there is absolutely no giving them whatsoever. So I've had to loosen it off a little bit with that screwdriver. So you get a bit of a, and then you can see here, I'm literally, you can see how it's gripping it. It's really stuck. So yeah, these are, there we go. That one actually come out a lot easier than some of the other ones. Ah, oh, dear me. So I've done a few, as you can see. I'm gonna crack on with the rest of them. Um, that bit there just, just pulls out um, and that, it's a button that you can press, I'll show you. So that just allows the door to be extended. Obviously as it is at the moment, you can't extend the door. Push this in and that allows you to, open the door 180 degrees which is cool so i'm going to crack on with this and i'm going to have a look and see what exactly is going on with this wire because let's be honest it does not look great um also i've noticed some other little bits like um there's some points here where the paint's been chipped as you can see um so i'm gonna have to go over that with some hammerite i think this van was abused quite a bit in regards to like what it had inside but i mean worst case scenario i've looked online and i've seen that there are um, a lot of doors online. There's some electrical cables down there. So I'm gonna have a look. I might have to get my multimeter out and see if there's actually a like a, a current coming through the cable to the actual lock itself. So I need to work out if it's the the actual loom itself, which I'll be very surprised if it isn't, given the state of it. So I might need a new one of those, or I might need to have a look and do some soldering. Or it might be the actual lock, potentially. Um, well, I don't exactly know how that works, but I'll have a look. Um, also, you know, just having a look at the door. Um, there are some things here, like these are a bit rusty here, like the bolts. I think they're Torx. Yeah, they're Torx bolts. Um, so yeah, I'll probably look at replacing those. Same as these, look. I mean, these are just ridiculous. So they would definitely be coming out. I'll be replacing those sanding all this back putting hammer right down making sure that that's nice and protected not going to get any rust on there so yeah i'll crack on anyway see how we go see how we go on another note um i think i've found a good technique um for those of you that are trying to get these out because i know that behind here obviously these exist as well so it's quite a lot to get out <clears throat> i'm pretty sure they're the same but these are 
little bits that pop in there to keep it in place. If you just slide the screwdriver in over the top like that and then twist it, it's really hard to do this one handed show you, but basically this is how I've been getting them out. Twist it that way, turn the screwdriver, then go underneath, turn the screwdriver like that, and then the top, turn the screwdriver, bottom, turn the screwdriver. And just keep doing that motion basically there we go it's starting to come there you go there she go there she is so yeah just be mindful obviously when you're doing it without a phone in your hand um one-handed <laughs> uh it's a lot easier and you don't run the risk of it flying off somewhere that you can't find it or it hitting you in the eye <laughs> cool i'll crack on hello again so I've managed to get that off um, finally, and it actually looks like this cable here um, is literally just for the number plate lights that are on here. So obviously that is um, not gonna be where the issue is, which is surprising because this um, loom here doesn't actually look too bad, although it has got some cable ties on it. So uh, obviously, Cable ties are not um, <laughs> standard from Citroen, so obviously someone's been having a fiddle with them. Uh, and I also had read on a previous um, MOT um, failure that the lights weren't working. So obviously someone's done something to this to get it working, to pass the MOT. So when I look through the history of the van, it's such a minor thing. So even though the harness looks crap, um, I think that one's all right actually. So I might have to just tidy that up a little bit, just maybe to help protect it from the elements or maybe when it's getting moved because it's getting trapped between the kind of brake like right there when it's closing so I need to see what I can do there to help that a little bit but yeah it looks like I'm gonna have to make a start on this door which makes sense because the central locking if it's on this door um, this is where the handle is here um, where you lock it so maybe the actual mechanism is this part here so it must be a cable that goes to this or a wire. Um, and I think that this one down here, where is she? Yeah, this one here, um, I think it's just mechanical. So this door is the one that closes first and then uh, this door closes into it. And then I think the central locking then locks that. So um, yeah, I have to remove this door card, do the same thing, remove the black plastic from underneath and um, I'll have a look at that lock. So I've taken the uh, panel off, as you can see, and um, the lock cable um, was plugged into there. It took me ages to figure out how this actually comes off. Um, but the way it works is that it's, so it slots in, obviously under here, as you can imagine, onto this connector here. And it's the bottom part. So you can't really see it, but what I did is I got my uh, nails just on these bits, pushed them down see uh, and then this whole red bit here oh, i wish i could hold it to show you but yeah this whole red bit as you saw just a second ago if you rewind just a second you'll be able to see it this actually um pulls down so when it was in position it was easier to kind of pull my thumb i use my thumbnail to just kind of uh pull that those inwards actually i think so that yeah that way and then in there's one. Excuse the back camera angle. That's a bit. It's really mucky as well, this. There we go. There we go. I've just loosened it off. So the way it works is that this part here on the bottom pulls down like that, which releases it. And then that allows it to pull off here. I couldn't see anything online on how to do that. And um, none of the pictures were kind of making it any easier. So yeah, it's just the, you got to play with these top parts here, loosen them off, and then the bottom pulls down and that is what allows it to disconnect. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my multimeter now and I'm just going to see if um, I'm actually getting a current when I uh, hit the lock button on the fob. And um, that'll be able to tell me as to uh, whether it's the actual lock bit inside here 
or um, whether it is actually the wire that I need the loom like I said because as you can see it has been messed around with another thing I noticed this door does open when it's not supposed to so um, these bits here have been snapped off so I'm probably looking at another one of these arms or something to pack this out here I'll show you a comparison so this has like these plastic bits here so when you shut a door slightly it rests on those like kind of where they're, they're like rubber I should imagine but they're little pads and uh, for some reason um, they've been ripped off on this one so as you, when you do that um, the door does actually stay shut but not as much as what it should do it opens up just a little bit further than uh, the 90 degrees I believe so yeah all right that's pretty much it so what I'm gonna do grab the multimeter now oh for those of you interested I took this off also <laughs> Uh, this is really easy to take off, literally two um, Allen or Xbox, whatever you want to call them. Um, here they are. So just, just focusing on that. Uh, two of those. Can you see that? There you go. Two of those either side. And what you can do is it basically just pinches onto here. So I'll show you. As you can see. Um, that part there, this, this, this bit here, that grips that part, and then that little, the end of the cable there, goes into here, which is the actual mechanism itself. So when you open it and close it, you can see it moving. So that's literally pretty self-explanatory, and that just tucks in the top and just follow it, so it'd be easy to take off and install. I know some people have decided if they want to have fixed beds, they've tried and work a way of raising this. Um, so yeah, it basically just looks like, like a generic clutch cable type thing that you'd find on a motorcycle. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's crack on with this and um, see which part is faulty. And uh, hopefully it is the cable. And if I follow the wires, I'm wondering if there's like a split cable or something that may, might have been caught at some point. Maybe under all this conduit, I might need to take all that apart and have a look. I think this is supposed to have something extra i've just noticed that this i think is an arm i've seen in other videos that kind of goes inside to protect this here and it's the same on the other side and you can see it's quite clearly not there so obviously i think they might have been removed to do maybe some like bodge repair but i might look at ordering some of those once i know that all the wiring's good hey so i just want to show you quickly um what i've done so um, i'm basically just using a multimeter um, I've got it onto volts, set it onto 20 because um, obviously it's a 12 volt system we're working on here. So uh, 20 is closest to 12, that's where you want to be testing it if you're testing 12 volts. Um, I can cover that kind of electrical stuff in um, another video if you want. Um, so what I've done is I've basically just um, used the common cable or the grounding cable if you like and attached it to um, a ground on the vehicle. So like bolts that don't have paint on are a really great ground. So um, that's where you want to be. Um, and what I've done is I've just gone through all of these just to see if I'm actually getting any current um, coming through or any volts, should I say, because I'm checking voltage, not current flow. Um, and I am actually getting 12 volts come through on that pin, which is the second one in from the left. I am getting a 12 volt reading when I press the button. So just to show you, um, it's there. I'm going to press the button now. Three, two, one, bang. There you go. Just went a little bit over there but it's it's averaging out about 12 volts so if you look it just hits just under 12 there bang so this to me looks like it's absolutely fine um so the harness is okay um so it looks like um it might be the actual lock itself um which i have looked on ebay there are about in the price range of about 60 pounds so um it's annoying having to buy that it's probably not something i'm going to do straight away because um I can manually lock this, so when I shut the door, um, I can actually lock it, lock it with the key. Um, so it's not a massive issue. It's just one of those niggly little things. And uh, for those of you that know me, know that I like everything to be working perfectly. <laughs> um, so yeah. Another thing that I want to mention um, is that I have seen some things about um, the Citroen relays, Fiat Ducatos and Peugeot boxes um, being really easy to break into. And uh, unfortunately that is the case. And one of the weak places that they can get broken into is 
around here. So um, I have just noticed, um, as I was just doing the video for um, when I was taking the volt meter, uh, volt measurement for the um, for the harness, for the wire harness, um, that there was a little bit of light coming through. I don't know if I can get the angle. There you go. I was like, oh, okay. So I've got a bit of, bit of a hole in the door there. And I tried to work out where it is. And it's right underneath here. So it looks as if this van has been broken into at some point or someone's had a good old go at it. Um, unfortunately, that is how you break in. If you look here, you can see the metal is twisted there. So that has been spiked. So you can get these armor plates, essentially. It's like a plate that goes over um, and that protects it. I think it goes on the outside. There are some YouTube videos about that. It's an amazing product. Um, it is just... Unfortunately, a very easy thing to break into, um, so just be careful. Uh, those of you who have these vans, because um, it looks to me like it's a very easy thing to break into, because obviously once you've got something in there, you just need to manipulate the lock then, and that pulls it. So, yeah. Bloody thieves, eh? So what I decided to do is take the entire back door lock off um just because i wanted to kind of assess how bad this is this is bent over and i've just knocked it into place there but i'll show you i have had to bend this back here um, but i'm definitely definitely going to um, buy one of those plates um, that just come down a tiny little bit just to kind of stop that from being spiked and then i'd hammer that in flat to the plate so i'm going to go and have a quick look and see how much i can pick one of those up for but um I'm going to have to quickly try and reassemble this um, because, as you can see, sunset is fast approaching and uh, I don't really fancy leaving a big hole in my van's door. So um, I'm going to leave it there for today, I think. Um, not much more I can do, really, in the time. Uh, my next challenge, I think, is to uh, try and get the ply off of the sides um, and then uh, eventually I'll uh, lift the floor up as well and see the condition of that. Um, probably be some holes I'll need to fill, I should imagine, because looking at the ply, um, they've done the traditional uh, drill straight down, um, which I know a lot of people do, but it's quite evident when a van um, is older, if you like, that um, you can see actually where the moisture starts seeping in. So I'm definitely going to be filling those holes. I'm not going to be drilling any holes into the bottom of the van, I can tell you that now. Um, I'm going to stick it down with uh, an adhesive, probably um, sticks like the censored version. Uh, for the family views and um yeah so basically i'll probably um, do that so i'd have to fill the hole so i'm kind of a little bit anxious about ripping the floor up but uh yeah we'll see how that goes um i'll put the handles back on which is fine um this little cover here is also um easy reach uh for the lock so there you go Peace. so i just want to um conclude this video really just um on where my thought process is um, I spoke to Angela, I kind of like spoke about the door situation. I think we're going to leave it for the time being, um, just because it doesn't really impact much. Um, I can still crack on with the build. Obviously, um, the doors are quite simple to um, kind of put new cards on if I need to, um, put some cladding over or whatever, carpet. I can always do that at a later stage and I can lock the door from the outside. Um, now, instead of me buying the parts individually so if i need to buy look at buying like new harnesses if i need to look at um buying kind of like the cable guide that goes into the door as you've seen they're completely missing on the van um if i need to buy new ones of those uh then along with the actual look itself which is around 60 pounds i don't even know how much those guides are the price is going to start adding up now i know that you can buy these doors from well anywhere between 150 pounds to 200 pounds and it will probably have the lock with it and potentially the guide. So that might actually be a cheaper way of doing this and getting these doors sorted out. And they are a little bit dented as well. And I'm not sure, like the other day I shut the doors for the van. It was daylight and I had a little bit of light seepage coming through um, through the sill. And um, I don't know how much of that is a case of like the actual brackets that hold the hinges in place not the main hinges but there's some adjustments you can make to like the door you can pull the hinges slightly in so you get a tighter fit i don't know how much of it is that so maybe before i rush and make that decision i'll kind of uh, judge it and see the condition of the actual doors sorry my camera just fell there um 
So yeah, um, I want to leave the video there anyway. I just wanted to kind of like tell you where my mind's at with it. So I'm, I'm debating whether to buy new doors or whether to actually buy the parts individually. But before I do that, I do need to make sure that the integrity of ours is, is okay. Um, I've seen some amazing line, uh, amazing videos online of um, people like fitting doors and it looks pretty simple. Um, so I do feel like it's something that I could do. Uh, it's just um, something I haven't mentioned yet because we live on the Isle of Wight. It is a massive pain in the ass to uh, <laughs> get the ferry. So obviously you're kind of like limited. So if there's like big things you want to buy like seats, doors, uh, like anything that's kind of big that is not going to be able to be sent over um, on the boat. Because there are some courier services that don't like sending things to the Isle of Wight. I kind of want to be able to do it all in one journey. So I'd really have to plan ahead. And I could pick those things up. So like the seat, I definitely need to pick up for the boys. That's one of the first things I need to get as well. Um, just because when I'm doing my layout for the van, I want to know exactly where it's going to go and how much kind of space it's going to give me measurement wise. Even though the measurements are unknown for the seat, I just want to have it so I can just see. And that's like one of the things I just want to get done. Uh, so if I need to go pick up some doors in the process of doing that, uh, along with some other bits and bobs, then I'll really need to like kind of plan that and factor it all in. Um, also with COVID and us being in lockdown at the moment, uh, that won't be anytime soon because, you know, I'm very limited to what I can do and, I'm, you know, I, I'm, we are actually uh, taking this quite seriously. So, yeah, anyway, we're um, not in a rush to sort it out, like I said. And, um, yeah, cool. If, um, if you like everything that you see, if you've got any kind of feedback or anything like that, obviously I'll pick the wrong door to start, which is great. I'm still learning, you know, like a, that I haven't got a manual or anything like that. So, you know, I, I wasn't to know it's the wrong door, but I'm pleased I looked at it because now I know exactly what that is. So it's worth taking it apart. But um, if, if you if you're liking what you're seeing, please uh, click like on the videos and um, feel free to like add some comments below if you want. Uh, if you've got any feedback um, or you've got any questions or anything like that, I'm be more than happy. Um, to go through that with you, like I said, with the connector for the um, for the lock on the door, hadn't seen anything online about that, so I had to work out how to do that. So if you've got any questions or anything, uh, feel free to ask, and I'll be more than happy to respond to that. Um, again, if you're liking the channel, please subscribe, um, hit the bell notification as well, just so you know when we're um, putting new videos up. Uh, I'm trying to do. I'll probably be putting up quite a few few videos at the beginning because I've got a little bit of time. So. Um, yeah, I'm going to see if I can uh, kind of knock a few videos out and uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. Cool. See you soon.